Hi guys! This video will introduce you to the next part of our area of knowledge exploration. We are going to start with mathematics as an area of knowledge. I know some of you are freaking out. Please don't freak out. It doesn't matter if you're good at math or even if you like or dislike math class. The area of knowledge of mathematics is very different. It's certainly compelling and accessible for everyone. So let's get started. Let's start with a quick brainstorm. When you think of math, what comes to mind? Numbers, functions, equations, algebra. What about geometry or statistics? Or maybe you think about logic and deductive reasoning or measurements or beauty. You might even contemplate if math is universal. Whoa. Okay, you need to stop yourself because there's a lot to play with with just that brainstorm. Now, let's consider the knowledge framework as it applies to mathematics in a general fashion. But where do we even start with the knowledge framework? Well, we start right at the top with scope and application. Scope refers to what is covered by the area. When it comes to math, this area of knowledge is concerned with quantity, shape, space, and change. Hmm, this is still a bit challenging to define. So when we consider scope, we can also discuss the qualities that are typically associated with the area of knowledge. So some people view math as the highest sign of intelligence. Others view it as having qualities of beauty and elegance. At first glance, it even seems to be broadly universal and untethered to particular cultures. But we'll talk about that later. Similarly, mathematical truths seem to be certain and timeless. But are they? We should also consider how mathematical knowledge is applied. Well, it's used to create models in the natural and human sciences, and it's necessary for many art forms. Okay, that's a good start. Now let's consider the role of concepts and language in mathematics. There are key terms in math, such as axiom, deductive rule, conjecture, theorem, proof. Math also uses precisely defined sets of symbols, which stand for abstract things like sets and relations. But be careful though, these symbols can differ from culture to culture. For example, the Danes and the Swedes punctuate their currencies very differently. So what are some of the methodologies used in mathematics? Math uses pure reason from axioms to produce proofs of mathematical theorems. Ugh, there are those words again. Let's just do a vocab check for a second. Axioms are propositions which are held to be self-evidently true in the sense that it requires no proof. But remember, what counts as an axiom in mathematics depends on a number of factors, such as the discipline, the philosophical branch, and even the degree of agreement between mathematicians. Other vocab check, mathematical theorems. Mathematical theorems are non-self-evident statements that have been proven to be true either on the basis of generally accepted statements, so axioms, or on the basis of previously established statements, so that's other theorems. So that's one common method. Math uses pure reason from axioms to produce proofs of mathematical theorems. Another method we should keep in mind has to do with proof. A statement in mathematics is true if and only if it is proved. But again, Remember that a proof in mathematics is an argument for a mathematical statement, and it is different from a demonstration. 
which is the application of a mathematical proof, showing how the proof works rather than explaining mathematically why it works. This is really different from how other areas of knowledge, such as both the sciences, define the methods of proving and demonstrating. Another difference between mathematics and other areas of knowledge that will impact methodology has to do with math's lack of dependency on sense perception. Instead, mathematics depends predominantly on reason, intuition, and imagination to prove theorems. Mathematics has been around for a long time, and many cultures have contributed to its evolution. Some of the biggest shifts in mathematical knowledge were the development of numerical zero and negative numbers. Another huge paradigm shift happened when the Pythagorean idea that all numbers can be expressed as a ratio of two integers was disproved. The theory was disproved by one of Pythagoras' own disciples, who showed that the square root of 2 is what we call, today, an irrational number. The evolution of geometry has had far more than a theoretical impact. It transformed paintings, architecture, and music. These kinds of paradigm shifts revolutionized how we view and interact with the world. Before I send you off to do a deep dive on cognity, I want to leave you with a few cautionary points. First, we need to be careful about how much of a pedestal we place math upon. A common mistake people make is equating math's abilities with intelligence. This simplifies the concept of intelligence to the point of stereotype. It creates a false hierarchy of intelligences that can damage individuals and society. So we need to be careful to not perpetuate that false correlation. Also, we need to be careful about how firmly we bond reason and mathematics. Many talented mathematicians who have made major contributions to this area of knowledge cannot always explain the source of their insight through reason. In fact, they often ascribe these insights to intuition, imagination, and even emotion. So don't be simplistic when examining the interaction between the ways of knowing and mathematics as an area of knowledge. Okay. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Head back to the Google Slides to see what you need to do for reading. Bye.